Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of What's For Dinner. If you're new here, my name is Jess and I'm a stay-at-home mom of two. I post these videos every Sunday to share some of the meals our family of four had throughout the week. This week I have three easy and delicious dinners for you guys, so let's get to the video. To start off this dinner, I have a little over a pound of beef stew meat. I'm going to get this seasoned with some salt and pepper. Then I'm going to coat it with a little bit of flour to get it brown in my skillet before I throw it in the crock pot. Stew meat always turns out more delicious and more tender when it's slow cooked. So don't do what I did here and just dump the whole bowl in the skillet. I wasn't thinking about it and I ended up with a whole mess of flour that I had to get out of the pan. But I'm just going to brown my meat on all sides in some butter and olive oil. I'm not going to cook this all the way through, I just want to get some color on it. Now that my meat is all browned, I'm going to season it with some garlic powder, some onion powder, parsley, seasoned salt, and some Tony seasoning. Next I'm adding in some beef broth. I didn't really measure this. I guess it would depend on the amount of meat you have. I just poured enough in so that every piece of meat was sitting in some of the liquid because that's what's going to make it tender. I probably used about a cup and a half or two cups of broth. Now I'm just going to put this on low and let it cook for about six hours. After the meat had been cooking for an hour or two, I started to add in my veggies. I have some fresh green beans I had in the fridge that I just cut up into smaller pieces. Then I chopped up two large carrots and in the microwave I defrosted about half a cup each of frozen corn and frozen peas. When everything was all done, I broke my meat up into smaller pieces. This was super tender, so it was easy to shred. Then I thought I needed a little bit more gravy, so I added in about half a cup of water and let this sit for another 15 minutes or so with the lid on. And I also added in a dash of Worcestershire. Thank you. 
I'm just using some refrigerated pie crusts. I'm gonna get my bottom crust into my pie plate and then add in my filling. Once I got my filling into the pie crust, I added on some Monterey Jack cheese. This is totally optional, but we like cheese in our pot pies. I added my top crust onto my pie and then just got all of the edges pinched together then I'm going to cut a few slits in the top for the steam to escape. Then I just put this in the oven at 375 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes until it was golden brown. When it was done, I let it cool on the counter for 10 or 15 minutes so that all the filling wouldn't fall out when we cut our slices. This turned out so delicious, but if you have a hard time getting your kids to eat veggies, this is one way they'll scarf them down. Adam made two of his pizza crusts and pre-baked them for five minutes. I'll have the pizza crust recipe down below, as well as the recipe for his marinara sauce. So to the first pizza crust, we just added half of our marinara sauce, a whole bunch of shredded Munster cheese, and some mozzarella.
To the top pizza crust, he added on the rest of the marinara sauce, some mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, and jalapenos on half. To go with our pizza, we're having a salad on the side with some cucumbers, red onion, some black olives, sweet tomatoes, and then we have some Italian style cheese, some bacon bits, and all kinds of dressings. Pizza night is always a favorite in our house, and with Adam's marinara sauce, it always turns out so delicious. So on this night, I'm trying out a recipe I found on Pinterest. I have a seasoning blend in this bowl that I made from some brown sugar white sugar, some salt, paprika, and white pepper. I also decided to add some cayenne pepper for a little extra spice. So I'm just gonna mix up that seasoning blend into my flour. And I thought it was weird that this recipe didn't have any garlic or onion powder, so I decided to add some. I added a teaspoon of each. So I have some drumsticks that I just patted dry, and then I have three eggs with some salt and pepper, and I'm gonna add some of this Red Devil cayenne sauce. So this recipe didn't say to double bread the chicken, but anytime I've made any kind of fried chicken before, I've always double breaded it. This was the first time I'd ever made bone-in fried chicken, so I was a little bit nervous, but it turned out great. So I'm just going to get my chicken into my flour mixture, then into my egg, and then back into the flour. Then I just let these sit at room temperature for about 10 minutes while I got my oil ready to help dry out the breading so it wouldn't fall off. Once my chicken was all breaded and my oil had reached 350 degrees, I fried my chicken in two batches for 10 minutes on each side.
my first batch was done, I just put them on a wire rack on a baking sheet and put them in the oven on 200 degrees just to keep them warm. So I've got my second batch going in my oil. I have a mixture of brown gravy and chicken gravy. I also made some simple mashed potatoes and some sweet corn. I was super proud of this chicken, you guys. Like I said, I've never made bone-in fried chicken before and it turned out so delicious. I can't tell you if it actually tasted like Popeye's chicken because I haven't had that in a very long time, but this was delicious and you should definitely give it a try. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, we would love for you to join our YouTube family. So hit that subscribe button down below and turn on notifications. I post what's for dinner videos every Sunday.